We have a schedule, a plan with him, and today was like a, probably like a 60% part of the practice, and then probably the next would be 70, and we'll just gradually go from there. Full practice for him uh, with, with some limitations, so it was good. Is Saturday on the table for him? Is possibility? I mean, uh, every, anything's possible, but we're just really going, you know, you know me, day to day, like we had a good day today, we'll see how it goes tomorrow. That's the approach you have to take right now. Seventy percent, like. Um, I mean, the, the practice, not him being seventy percent. The practice, right. you know, instead of the full practice, I think he was out there for what? He had a little work done with Clarky, and then he did like half our practice. That 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 was on a schedule for us. So we're we're, we're sticking to the schedule. And in terms of the progression, like you know, it seemed like he got you guys did rush drills. He was yeah. out there, and then when it came time for sort of traffic and net front and battle, that seemed to be <clears> not a coincidence. That's when he leaves. No, it's because uh, he was on earlier. So you know, you want to limit his. Time on the ice. That's all it is. What about uh, Day to day, possible for tomorrow, but he's getting close. Yeah. Mike, do you know where he fits exactly in the lineup? <clears throat> Either in the middle, on the wing, and, and who to play with come playoff time? Well, we're going to have to, you know, we've been tinkering with different ideas. Um, and it's going to be matchups and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an evolving process to figure it out, but. You know, um, I think he's a, obviously if he he could play the wing sometimes, but he's definitely for me he's a really good centerman. How much will some of those decisions be dependent on who you play in the first round, the yeah. kind of game they play in the matchup? Yeah, you'd be crazy. I, you know, certain teams are different. You know, um, so you, you you do tinker with lines, defense pair because of the opposition. But saying that, you still got to worry about your team. You know, the way you play. I mean, you can't. Game plan just about a team all the time. It has to be your team, what you guys do best. The other, guy, do best. the other guys that didn't skate just flat out maintenance. Yeah, stuff. maintenance day. Yep. A couple of bumps and bruises. Nothing major. Just I thought it was a good time. I think those guys logged 20 minutes last night. I just, you know, we had a couple of big games cut up. I think they need the rest on this one. For Archer, did you give any particular message to him about, you know, what last night meant in the big picture? Well, I just went up to him. I just told him how proud, you know, the two goal, quick goals, you know, in that stage against the Stanley Cup champs, you know, it's a, it's a pressure game and the way he stood tall, you know, he didn't sink. I think his next shot, if you, I forget the save, it was just, you know, he was on top of the, like he looked big. It wasn't like, you know, sometimes goalies get a little bit nervous and they back in, he didn't do that. So you could tell he's, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think the stage is too big for the kid. And then seeing Connor last night at the end of the game, yeah. given the chance and everything, you know, given where the season started yeah. for him, it's, it's a long way, it's almost, <clears throat> Maybe, probably wouldn't have imagined that if you were on the outside. Well, it's a great story because you know I've known Gars for a lot of years, and you know he wasn't in a good place in October. Or, you know, let's face it, or September. I forget the date. He had uh, even early in the season, but what he's done um, to not to turn like he's always been a good player, but uh, his mental state is just he's rock solid. You know, and uh, he became a lot of you know a lot of noise. Got to give the kid a lot of credit. Is that who he was in Arizona? Yeah, he's a uh, he's a. He was a, you know, I don't know how many games he played, 400, right, or 401, and uh, I think I've coached him at least 330, and I know Garst. Like, he just, he's a feisty guy. Um, when he's sharp mentally, he's a really good hockey player, so you always got to stay on top of that. Um, but, yeah, no, he's a, you know, I think he's out a lot at this year in the room. I mean, he's a, little, he's a joke. Like, I think he's joking more than he's ever had. Not, not coincidence he's playing well. It's just that he's adding a little bit of that, you know, personality in the room. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they go at it, and I think the players love that when they go at it. So uh, it's a fun banter. I, I love when the room's like that. I think we need a little more of that. How much? How important is that kind of levity as you're heading into oh. this stretch of the season with a group of guys who hasn't really been there before? I think it's huge. I mean, I hope somebody pranks somebody in the next week. <laughs> uh, you know. uh, yeah, yeah, Flowers got the, some of the best, but you know, baby powder and the blow dryer, something like that. Uh, the, the, that's the old school stuff, but. Um, yeah, no, it'd be great. I, I think it's important to keep guys, you know, relaxed, even keeled. Rick, you talked last night about what a third line could be in the yeah. postseason, how vital it is. Same thing can go for your fourth line. And that line had some pretty good shifts last night. What have you made of, of Lafferty's year? You like your big wingers. He did play in the playoffs with the Leafs. He's, he has a bit of pedigree there. What do you like about his game in terms of what he could possibly bring in the postseason? Last yeah, if you, if you actually watch him, I think it was at least against Florida last year, he was one of the better Leafs because he was on the four check. He was hitting uh, against a Florida team that's aggressive, right? Um, I think the, for one of the very first four checks, he went there, hit somebody, 
uh, Mikheyev turned the puck, uh, made them to the puck over, and we, we ended up getting possessed. That's the sort of stuff we need Laugh to do, to be that aggressive guy, uh, stop in that front, score those goals in front. Uh, and uh, it's a chance for him uh, to really give us that kind of, that winger that can do that stuff. And, and play center if we need him. Rick, last night and after the game, you talked about Brock and, and him scoring 40 goals. And I think a lot of people in this market saw him as being that type of a player. You also mentioned the fact that he's been battling through something. How dinged up has he been? But also, to see a guy like that succeed after everything that he's gone through. No, he's healthy. He was just, <clears throat> last game or two, he's been a little, it's nothing major. <clears throat> I was just proud the way you know he fought through it. It's it's not a major thing, but it, it, that's the mental, you know, the mental toughness that he's had this year. Um, <clears throat> he's overcome some stuff mentally, and I think that those are the these are key moments for him, you know, pushing through last night and getting that big goal for us. That's a huge goal, um, and um, you know, just pushing through. So how does a six-year-old guy spend his afternoon on his birthday? I got to do some more video. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm not watching any video. No, I'd grab dinner or something like nothing major. How much can uh, Lindholm help your penalty kill? Uh, well, let's right, right away the face off. If you can get the puck down, <clears throat> if he's doing sixty percent, which is outstanding, or even I think he was higher, and you get that puck down, that's you're knocking twenty five seconds off a power play, right? So right away you're at minute thirty. That's huge. Um, smart guy, you know. Um, you know, and analytically the PK has been actually it's been good. It's just that we, I think the clears and just a couple of you know, a couple of little mistakes here and there. It's in our, it's been our net lately. So I don't, I don't think it's a major thing. But having Lindholm's going to be, you know, and Demmer is going to have you're going to you're probably have two one of your best two penalty killers coming back here soon, which is going to help. Jules is also pick? a pretty good penalty killer. Yeah, you talked about going eleven and seven. So yeah, I, I thought of it, but it's it's a t I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think sometimes you can use it. I don't know when we use it, but uh, you know, I know some teams have done it and been successful. Some haven't. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm honestly I'm 50-50 on it. I, I don't have a, a feel for it. To be aside, aside from the face-offs uh, with, with Lindholm, why, why does that pairing with Luger work so well on the PK? Well, I think they're just the chemistry. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> the one thing I think we could be a little more aggressive. I don't think we've been as aggressive. And I think when you have chemistry, those two guys know when to go. Even Dakota, and Teddy have done a nice job. But I think when you pair with somebody, you know, when one guy goes, the other guy knows when to go. I think we've been a little bit slower. Because of that, and um, maybe it's less. You know, sometimes if you less pressure, you give the team too much time. The last couple of minutes, last night, you went mostly with your big D man. While well, you guys were technically not much Quinn, what's the sort of thinking and how you pick your defenseman in crunch time like that? Well, you know, usually the last two minutes, <clears throat> you're looking for you know somebody's going to you know block a shot or you know box out. You know, um, but Huggy he he defends in a different way. He, I mean, if you watch him, he defends with quickness. Like how many times does he go in the corner? quicker than the other guy and gets the puck. You know, he, I thought his breakouts were outstanding. He made a couple of, like, unreal breakouts, backhand pass to a middle guy, go, streaking up. Like, that's not too many guys can do that. So sometimes guys like that are good, def like, are really good defenders. You just got to pick your spots, who's on the ice, you know, off a of face off. Usually the teams that win a draw, they're going to get that one timer. So you need that, you know, Myers or Juleson, or they're going to take, they're going to, you know, Cole, they're going to eat a puck for you. And um, that's the, the reason for it. Sillows get another game potentially, <clears throat> or with Thatcher coming back, is he probably uh, No, he's possibly. You know, I, I haven't decided on tomorrow, so um, or the next game. So we'll we'll, we'll figure from there. Will he's not have, done. Will we have three goalies in the playoffs? Uh, y y yes, I think so. I got to talk to Patrick, but yeah. So what, what we've done that, yeah. So now that you've seen Sillows for three games, uh, what's your comfort level with him? Well, I mean, listen, he, it's, it's three games, but I just, I, I just like his um, demeanor right now. I like the way he's playing. Uh, he's a confident kid, and that doesn't mean Casey's not confident, too, because he's played a lot of important games for us, too. So it's a good problem to have. You had, what's Ronick's uh, play recently been like? How do you think he's trending? I think he's trending up. I think I've really liked his game. Um, I think his defending's been really good the last couple weeks, uh, closing in on people. Um, you know, I'm not worried too much of the offense with him, uh, but I think he, he really, and him and Hughes have really played well, I think, really together the last five games. I really liked their game. Well, it seems a lot more aggressive, a lot more physical than he was earlier in the year. Correct. Um, I think there's a little bit of a reason for that. Um, obviously, he, he came up and he told us. He, he, he didn't even, like, you know, he knows he had to play better, but I think he was waiting because sometimes there are, 
sometimes our forwards are not coming back to the right spot, so we, he, would, he would back off. And I think we've corrected some of our rush coverage. I think that that's helped our defense hold the line a little bit more. So I think that's it's kind of a little bit both. You know, It's just not his fault, too. There's a lot of guys you're going to find out about in the playoffs because they haven't played in them. He's got a, a, an awful lot of games for a guy who's never yeah. played a playoff yeah. game. Do you think he's suited? How, how do you project him to handle what's what's coming? Well, I mean, it's hard to answer. I, he's, he's never been there, but I think these games, like get last night's game, you know, going to in LA, going into Vegas, the last, you know, this whole week, it's a it's a good dress rehearsal for him. You know, it's you know, it's it's you know, you heard JT, like you have to experience to really understand it, and he's no different. So, but the only you know, the only advice I you know for guys like him is like you, you can't be nervous about it. You just got to play your game. You know, you can't. You know, you know the other team's going to play harder, and they're going to back check harder, and there's going to be more sh uh, more scrambles in front. But you got to still play the same game. You can't change your game because of the the pressure. Uh, you guys, two wins away from 50. This is one of the most successful Canucks regular seasons of all time. Do you have, even though you are focused on the playoffs, do you have to kind of stop and remind your players just of the success they they've had so far this year? Yeah, I think it's important that they enjoy it and they have a little bit of swagger because of it, sure. Um, but the hard part is, you know, like today, like last night, you know, we were, you know, guys were really pleased with the effort and we win the game, but now it's the same thing in the playoffs. you got to come back to earth the next day. That's just, you know, you can ask the great teams of great players. They know how to come back the next day, put a work day in or a rest day or whatever day it is to, to, to focus for the next game. Uh, that's the hardest part as a pro athlete or even as a coach is how do you come down off a high? Um, and it's the same thing in the playoffs. We might, you know, first game, who knows? You might lose 6 nothing. Um, you might win 6 nothing. How do you ch work that next off day? That's the, that's the hardest part, I think, in sports. The guys who had maintenance days today, if you get find a place, will they rest a game before the... Well, I think it's it's going to depend. It's game to game. It depends, you know, how this plays out. Um, you know, if we win, you know, hopefully we can win the next few games here. Uh, it makes my decision easier how to play it out. But uh, as of now, everybody will be in the lineup tomorrow. How much does the division title mean to you? Um, I mean, I think we've gone this far. Why not go get it? Um, but I, I don't think it's the end of the world either way. I'm not trying to take pressure off our team by saying that. It's just. You know, we're, we've, we've worked hard to get this position. Why would you not work even harder to, to get it? I mean, it makes no sense. So I think it's important that we try to get it. Um, if it happens, it should be a feather in the cap for the guys. They've worked hard this year. That's his guards. He's a, he's a greasy guy. Greasy. Not his hair. His hair is not greasy. But, <laughs> but. One guy wore it to the game, but uh, <laughs> it, it, that was that was uh, uncalled for. But no, it's just. Connor Garland getting the chant tonight. Yeah, Michael Down is the worst player ever to have their their name chanted in it. <laughs>